Hi everyone! The video you're about to watch was recorded for an online meetup organized by Addy Adjanson from House Mac and which took place on May the 6th, 2020. It's a shorter version that focuses especially on how you can use Ilya to create decals, foliage and post-process renderings. If you're interested in the whole version, you will find the link in the description. Have a nice viewing! The first topic to be seen today is how to work with decals. Decals are very handy when you need to customize a surface like a wall. So first I'm going to add a decal in the scene right there. Uh, I will give a name to that decal. And then I will rotate. So now I will create a material based on the texture I created earlier. I open it. I need to change the material domain and the blend mode because as it is a decal, it has not the same way of functioning. I apply and I drag and drop the material into the decal material. Now I want to show you what is of the most interesting part of Iliad. But to do so, I have to resize my window and then I edit texture with Iliad. Great. So we can see we have the texture displayed on the wall. Perfect. But let's imagine now I would like to have something transparent. To do so, I just have to disable the white background. I will click on the eye. And it's not exactly transparent. We see a black background instead of the white. And that's because I have to change uh, a parameter in my material. I actually have to connect the alpha channel to the opacity. I apply and now you can see it is transparent. The green stroke is now transparent. But let's do something more interesting. So I will delete the content of that layer and you'll notice that it updates immediately the decal on the wall. And if I take another brush, I change the color and I try to draw something, you can see it updates the, the decal. I have to rotate the shape again because it's upside down. And let's have some fun. You can see I can paint, I can even uh, make some, some drops, like if the painting has drooled on the surface, like this. I can even play on the opacity if I need it to be um, more transparent. And basically, you understand how decals work. I can show you better examples, and so I will show you things I have made earlier. So I select my decal, I drag and drop this material, and I will edit the texture linked to the material. And uh, you notice there are much more layers in that texture. We even have folders. That's something I really want to underline because if some of you have already used Iliad previously, uh, the first version couldn't save layers in, in the texture and now it is possible, so um, yeah, kudos to the development team for that. So yeah, I'm playing with the layers so you can see how, how it updates the texture in real time. And we can even play with the blending modes, the layers blending, blending modes. I, if I change here from multiply to normal or to a screen, for instance, you can see how it changes the, um, the, the, the rendering of the layer on the decal directly. Uh, okay, now let's play with something else. Foliage or foliage, I don't know how it is pronounced. Um, so, uh, first of all, I, I need a mesh and so I'll be using one of the very basic shapes included by default in Unreal Engine, so I will take a plane, I drag it, drop it into my content brother, and now I have to go to the foliage tab at the top to drag and drop that plane as a foliage type. Now I'll open the mesh and then I drag and drop my material to replace the default material. So uh, the idea is to use the foliage to paint a climbing plant on the wall. 
To do so, uh, I need first to edit a few things in my foliage parameters. First, I increase the Z offset, because if I don't, the foliage will flicker, because the mesh is a flat plane, so uh, I need to change the off offset to avoid any flicker, right? Then I will also change the grand slope in order to be able to paint on the wall, because by default we can only paint on a rather flat ground. And now I paint with my foliage. You see how fun it is? <laughs> okay, that's lame, sorry. Um, let's change our texture and do an actual plant, okay? So I go back to the texture and I kill the fun. <laughs> And I will use a different brush. I will use Camouflage, which is a brush made of an array of various uh, stamps, of various patterns, and that use various greenish um, colors. So I modified the, the texture and we can see it changed the foliage um, in real time. Um, but I'm not very convinced by the results, that's because I forgot to change the material parameters. So I go back to the material and I change the material domain from decal to surface because it's not a decal anymore, right? I'm not very convinced by the results, I will use another brush, I will use cartoon bush like this. Um, I'm not very, I don't really like the results, so I will maybe add more foliage, so we'll change the density. So the density will actually add more meshy at the same time when you paint with a brush. But I don't really like the results. Mm. Okay, so I, I will go back to camouflage. and But this time I won't paint with camouflage, I will turn it into an eraser. And to do so, I have to change the alpha mode uh, from normal to erase, which will make something more uh, leafy. I don't know if it's an actual adjective, but there's just something wrong with that because I forgot to apply the material parameters. Yes, that's much better. Now it's, it is not a decal anymore, it is a surface. Yeah, we can see it is more, it acts more like a, a true ivy like a, a climbing plant. Uh, let's uh, turn a little around the building so we can see we can also paint on the other side of the building. Now I'm about to show you how we can also use Iliad for post-process renderings. So I will add a post-process volume in my scene. I drag and drop it in my scene. I give it a name. And uh, I will immediately um, configure something in the pass process. I will check an option to unbound the pass process, which means it will always be visible regardless of my position in the scene. And now I'm going to create a new texture again and add a new material from that texture. Then I double click to open the material. Uh, first of all, I have to change the material domain from surface to pass process. Then I have to create a new node named scene texture. There it is. And I will uh, connect scene texture to the texture sample thanks to another node named add. So I connect color to A and RGBA to B, and I connect it to emissive color. And I forgot to change a parameter into scene texture, so I click on scene texture and I change the ID to pass process input. I apply, then I will open the texture, I'll resize my windows so we can see both at the same time. And I will make a few brush tests. I add a white background because it will be necessary. And I create a new layer and I will look for a good brush for my tests. 
option on make it a little bigger I'll change the colors and yep I can paint with it that's perfect and now, obviously, I have to use my material into my past process volume because it is not the case yet. So I have to find it. It is into rendering features into past process material. You can actually add an array of materials, but for that example, I will just use my single material. I drag and drop it. And now you can see the result, which is quite interesting and like for the decals and the foliage if I edit the texture it edits the past process and because I have uh, checked the unbound uh, feature when I turn the camera we can still see their result the texture just like if it was a mask or a stencil Let's have another result. So this time I won't be using add node, but I will be using multiply. So I add multiply. I connect it like this. I apply. Never forget to apply. And there we have something totally different. Instead of having a stencil, we are using the texture as if it was a, a stain on the camera view. And we can do something even funnier. Let's imagine, for instance, I would like to use the texture to act like kind of fog. So I can add a new node named Panner, like this. And uh, in the details of Panner, you can change the speed of X and Y axis. And the Panner will actually move the texture uh, depending on the, 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 the value entered in the details. We apply, and there we have that result. <laughs> um, this example will be actually very handy because it, it can I can then show you something. The fact that by default, if you use uh, any brush, you will have this you know seam. You have this border visible on the texture, which is not what you want. If you want to have something that uh, loop, if you want a looping texture or a seamless texture, you can do that by changing the parameter of your brush do so you have to open the blueprint of the brush and open the class detail just by clicking here on that icon and uh, by default in Iliad you have we offered a new class that is the looping class so you just have to change it right there and when you use the looping class you will be able to uh, use the brush to paint in loop on your texture so you will create seamless texture and because now I'm using the looping class, I have the possibility to uh, find a new node named Odyssey Looping Stamp, which will I uh, connect to the other nodes. So particularly, I'm just uh, connecting, yeah, the, the the sample, the pivot, the x and y coordinates, and the pressure tablet to the flow. I delete the simple stamp because I don't need it anymore. I check tile horizontally and vertically and I compile my blueprint and now if I paint with my brush I can paint seamlessly because if I go to left I paint to the right and if I go down it paints at the top and you can see on the left on, on the on Unreal Engine viewport there's no seams anymore there's no border on the texture I can show you another result with another brush that was already configured to be seamless. And just like other textures, I can also play with the opacity to have something more subtle. Uh, yeah, and now it looks like a true post-apocalyptic environment. Or maybe a post-COVID-19 environment. Who knows? Hey, hey, hey! Before you leave, don't forget you can join us on our Discord server. We are a friendly team and we love to chit-chat, so don't be shy. And if you want to support us, you know how it works. Like, subscribe and share. And if you're in a really good mood, you can even give us pocket money on Patreon. 
Thank you and take care.